John Daniel Davidson, Pagan America, The Decline of Christianity and the Dark Age to Come. Let me just tell you, there's a couple of signs of, of hope, and I'd like John to address uh, some of this as we go along. First of all, here's Donald Trump two days ago. Cut and six. what the hell was Biden thinking when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day? Such total disrespect to Christians, and November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know what it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day, when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. Then we also had this come out over the weekend. Here's Richard Dawkins, very famous atheist, not proclaiming Christianity as his belief, but listen to what he says. I do think that we, we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols. And um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. If I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. Okay. Forget about the Islam part. The culture of our country is based on Christianity. So let's bring John in about pagan America. We are a Christian nation. You believe that? I believe we were. I don't think we are now. I think we're entering a post-Christian era for America and for the West. So that kind of sounds bad if you listen to Richard Dawkins. Yeah, absolutely. Richard Dawkins should know better, right? You can't have the culture without the cult. You can't have Christianity uh, as a cultural force, as a force that shapes the public square and forms the character of the people without the actual religion behind it, people who believe. Elsewhere in that clip that you played, he said, now I understand that the number of believing Christians are going down in this country, and I think that's a good thing. Hmm. What does he think is going to happen to all the cathedrals and right. all the parish churches? They're going right. to turn into mosques in the case of Britain or apartments or nightclubs. So what happens to us? We become pagan. And part of the claim of the book is that there's really only one alternative to Christianity, which is paganism. Now, I don't mean that we're going to have temples to Zeus and Apollo popping up in Times Square or a surge of witchcraft, although we, do, we are seeing that surge. Yeah. What I mean is that our public life, our communal life as a nation and a people is going to be defined by the pagan ethos, not the Christian ethos. Which the pagan ethos is what? Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. A radical subjectivity about man, about God, about our natures, about what we can become and what we can do. And so what determines what public policy should be or what determines what is right isn't based on any universal claims about human nature or the image of uh, God, man being created in the image of God, it's based on force and coercion. And that's how pagan societies have always been. That's why they were slave societies. So pagan societies in the 20th century, Soviet Union, yep. Germany, post-Christian. Yes, yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Uh, and what were they characterized by? Force, coercion, a rejection of human nature, a rejection of the idea of human rights. So, um, you're seeing that everywhere. And this is what led you to the, uh, the idea that we're, we're post-Christian. Is there any way to turn it around? I don't think there's a way to turn it around in our lifetimes. So let's put it that way. So uh, I don't think that you know, Christianity will be defeated in the end. I'm a Roman Catholic myself, and so I believe in uh, the permanency of the church and of the Christian faith and victory in the end. But this is a generational struggle. It's been centuries now that Christianity has been declining in the West uh, and has really accelerated since the middle of the last century. And I don't think that it's going to be turned around in our lifetimes and maybe not even in our children's lifetimes. But there are things that we can do to sort of preserve the flame and rebuild like amid the ruins. Like what? Transmit the faith to our children, carve out spaces for our churches and communities. And this is the important part. We don't retreat into those communities. We find and fight on ground we can win. 
Now, that may mean moving out of large cities that are lost, and it also may mean getting involved at the local level to take back your school district, take back your library, right. take back your, your, your city council, you know, uh, and bring the faith, the Christian faith, back into the public square where it was for most of our history as a country. You know, I've been saying for a long time now, I think it's really important that, and I, I don't like this because I don't, I don't want to segregate us. I don't want, you know, two separate Americas. But I think because of the battle that we're in right now, um, I think it's important to be in like-minded communities, especially mm -hmm. religiously speaking. And I don't mean all of the same religion. I mean that they are Judeo-Christian um, value-driven uh, communities mm -hmm. because we, we, we if, if you're not in that community and you are not surrounded by the people with the same kind of um, ethics and ethos, you could very well be into a community that goes wrong on either side, mm -hmm. on either right or left, and, and goes into darkness quickly. Do you agree with that? You also get lulled into a sense of complacency, right? That, that things are okay. Uh, it's, it's not as bad as it seems. Part of the, uh, you know, arresting title and subtitle in the cover of the book, which has a burning church on it, is to wake people up, to get people to accept that this is happening. We're living in a post-Christian society. Christianity is not going to be the dominant force in the public life of America moving forward, as it has been, as I said, for most of our history. We're going to become a pagan country, and that means that Christians are going to become a persecuted minority, as they always have been in pagan society. Well, wouldn't you say that we're already really kind of there? It's not as bad as it, as it probably will be, but we're already there. Look, if you're pro-life, you're toast. Yeah, you know, uh, the, the, the number of things that you can't publicly disagree with or dispute is growing seemingly by the week, right? You have to accept that Easter is really trans day of visibility. You have to accept that uh, abortion is a positive good, not just safe, legal, and rare, but it's a positive good that's necessary to vindicate the rights of women. Uh, you, ha you can't question gay marriage anymore. That ship sailed a long time ago. Uh, so these are things that are part of the what I call the pagan uh, morality or the state morality of the new pagan regime. And you, you're, there is no dissent allowed on these things because dissent, tolerance in the public square, freedom of speech, that's a Christian virtue. That's a luxury that only a Christian society can afford. Has there been any pagan uh, countries that have lasted I mean, I know Soviet Union, 80 years, but is there any modern pagan that, that just don't eat themselves? Well, no. And the thing that uh, always happens to pagan societies when they encounter Christianity, going back through history, Christianity is the only thing that breaks the pagan stranglehold on, on a people across geography, across uh, time, across cultures. It was the encounter with Christianity that broke these pagan societies because it it proposed a radically new way of conceiving of man and our relationship to God and one another and how we should organize society. And as Christianity retreats, that paganism, that pagan ethos that's simmering just below the surface is going to come back in modern forms, in modern iterations, as it did in Nazi Germany, as it did in the Soviet Union. Uh, and those were periods where there was sort of this illusion of like of atheism and of secularism. That's that, we're, we're shedding that pretty quickly. This idea that the future is going to be the secular, liberal utopia is totally wrong. Well, I think wokeism is a religion. Yes. I mean, it's, it's a it, form of paganism. Yeah, it has its high priests. Uh, you can easily be excommunicated. It has its rituals. Yeah. It has things you must do and must never do. It's the opposite of Christianity. There is no forgiveness. Even the mm -hmm. high priests can't forgive you unless you know, you bow down to them. I and mean, then only maybe. <laughs> and then only maybe, uh, depending on who you are. I mean, it is, uh, it, it's so clearly a religion. Um, why, why call it paganism instead of wokeism? Uh, because I think wokeness, wokeism, just like atheism uh, or communism, is a species of paganism. And that 
uh, when you really dig into what paganism is and how it works, what we're seeing is a resurgence of paganism in a modern context. And so part of it is a vocabulary problem, right? Mm. We're not going to talk about the gods in the same way that ancient pre-Christian peoples talked about the gods. But we are seeing a growing acceptance of the idea of, of spiritual forces, a uh, movement away from pure materialist, secular, scientific sort of thinking that denies all supernatural reality, that denies all spiritual reality, especially among young people, you see this right now, this admixture of being secular on the one hand in rejecting organized religion, but being open to spiritual forces uh, and uh, and things like identity that are that are really beyond reason, or I would say a disfigurement of reason, which is another hallmark of a pagan society. And we see that everywhere now. So you you saying these things, it would be really easy for the left to say, ah, you want, you're a Christian nationalist. <laughs> you want a Christian country that is run by the church. How do you respond to Christian nationalism? Well, it would be great if it were true. Uh, <laughs> the funny thing about the Christian nationalist debate uh, as I, as I sort of the argument in my book kind of lays out, is that it's the opposite of the case. We're not becoming a Christian nationalist country. I, I don't even know what that means. It, uh, I think what they mean by that is that they don't want Christianity to have any influence on our national life mm. and on the public square, as was the case for our entire history up until the middle of the last century. Um, but the idea that Christian nationalists are somehow ascendant or that Christians are somehow gaining power and influence in the United States is a joke. And when you look at the demographic data and you look at the decline in church affiliation and church attendance, you look at uh, how... It's plummeting. It, yeah, on every metric across the board. So it, it's, a, it's a weird argument to make at a time when Christianity has never been weaker in the United States. But there is... There are those that do want a, I mean, they're very fringe, 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 um, but they do want a religious state. And that, I don't think that's what you would want when you said it would be great if it were true. <laughs> I don't think it would be great if it were true. To uh, I want the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, but yeah. I want the people to, to um, regulate themselves. And, you know, as, as Franklin and Jefferson said— the, the best way to regulate yourself is through religion, through yeah. Christianity. Well, you had John Adams' famous line that our Constitution was meant for only a moral and religious people. It's unfit for any other. Um, but, you know, it, it really is true that, you know, Remy Brog, the French philosopher, said in the 1990s, talking about Europe, that European civilization, uh, you know, is, is a product not of uh, calculation, but of faith. So you need actual Christian belief, you know, contra Richard Dawkins. Mm -hmm. You can't just have the principles. They rely as their source of vitality on an active faith among the people. So if we actually had a critical mass of believing, practicing Christians in this country, we would have things like free speech, tolerance, an open public square, human rights and respect for everybody. The things that are disappearing right now under, a uh, an ascendant and emerging pagan regime. The name of the book is Pagan America, The Decline of Christianity in the Dark Age to Come. Um, I just want to hold you over for just a, sure. a second longer because it's a little dark, and <laughs> I'd like to see the hope in all of it. You know, I hear from people all the time, well, it's never going to get that bad. I mean, it's, you know, it's never been like that, and it's never going to get that bad. Uh, clearly not true, John. Uh we're in a different place than we've yeah. ever been before. So give me some hope. What, what can be done? The last chapter of the book is titled The Boniface Option, and it's a, a loving dig at Rod Dreher's The Benedict Option, which came out in 2016. Uh, and one of the things that the Dreher argued for was to you know, build up your local communities, your local churches, your home schools, your family communities, um, and sort of build an arc to survive the storms to come. And one of the things I push back on a little bit is the idea that we can just build arcs and kind of sh hunker down and survive. We have to push forward and we have to push Christianity out back into the public square where it was and where it belongs as a testament to the faith. I think there is hope in this sense. As people shed their sort of strict materialist worldview 
and and are open to the idea of spiritual forces. There's an opportunity for Christians to proclaim their faith publicly again and proclaim it to uh, people who maybe are more open than they were a generation ago when secular liberalism seemed uh, uh, triumphant and it seemed like the future was going to be this atheist, cold, rationalistic world. That's not the world that's that's emerging right now, and and so there's there's real um, there's real battles to fight with real spiritual forces, oh, and yeah. Christians need to sort of uh, put on their armor and get ready to fight for their faith by, like I said earlier, taking back your schools, taking back your city halls, taking back your towns, um, but also be prepared to proclaim the faith publicly and pay a, a cost for it, right? There was a long period in this country where Christians and the state were kind of, you know, on the same side and, mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. Christians enjoyed a kind of deference and mm-hmm. privilege that they didn't through much of our history. That's coming to an end and we need to wrap our mi- minds around that. We need to steal our nerves and we need to uh, take heart in the truth of our faith uh, and, and the, the sucker and the strength that it gives us. And that only gets, that only begets the stronger yes. Christians, yes. stronger people of faith, when they really have to struggle with it, that's our problem. We haven't had to struggle with our faith for so long. It's just like, yeah, I, you know, I'm sure I believe in God. You right. wouldn't say it out loud many times, but uh, now that with you're starting to be pushed, you're seeing more and more people talk about it openly. Thank you so much for being in here. It's uh, Pagan America, The Decline of Christianity and the Dark Age to Come, John Daniel Davidson.